I'm Ferris Arvandi uh, from Polytechnic University of Catalonia. Today, I'm going to talk about the problem of finding the nearest 4D rotation matrix from a noisy rotation matrix. Uh, well, uh, this problem can be solved using the singular wire decomposition. But in this presentation, I'm going to present two new class form methods. And this is the joint work with the professor Federico Thomas. So uh, my presentation is structured as follows. I will start with an introduction to the nearest 40 rotation matrix. After that, uh, I will review the singular wire decomposition and present two new class form methods. And uh, then uh, I will present a comparative analysis to show the relative uh, computational cost and the performance error. Then uh, the last part of my presentation includes the main finding of this paper and my presentation will take about 15 minutes. So uh, a rotation matrix R is said to be orthogonal if uh, RR transpose is equal to three by two identity matrix and it's proper if when the determinant of R is equal to one. But uh, there are some application in robotics, computer graphics uh, that uh, we, we get the noisy 4D rotation matrix. So uh, then we have to find the nearest rotation matrix. The first application is point color registration. When two register, when two scan to be registered do not perfectly overlap, then we need to find the optimal uh, transformation between the source point color and the target point color. And the second application is hand eye calibration. When we want to find the, the transformation between the camera and end effector. Recently, these two problems were solved by the 4D rotation matrix. However, the, the results uh, are not exactly proper orthogonal, so we have to find the nearest uh, rotation matrix and efficiently solving this problem uh, is an important problem in uh, these two applications. So uh, uh, actually, uh, um, uh, orthogonal, Orthogonal, uh, orthogonal, orthogonality, finding the nearest orthogonal matrix from a noisy rotation matrix uh, can be obtained by the Frobenius norm between the noisy rotation matrix and the estimated one. So the minimization of this uh, equation is equivalent to maximize trace R transpose R. And using the Lagrange multiplier, it can be proved that the, the optimal solution to this equation is given by this formula where the E is, the, is an error matrix. And so uh, the SVD method is the standard method of choice to solve this problem. And I'm going to explain to uh, closed form method, closed form diagonalization method and the closed form double quaternion method. Let's now take a look at the SVD method. The singular wire decomposition of a uh, matrix uh, uh, is given by this. So as I said before, in order to find the nearest rotation matrix, we have to minimize the Frobenius norm between the noisy rotation matrix and the nearest rotation matrix, the estimated one. So, and this is equivalent to maximize this equation and this equation, it can be proved that this equation is maximized when R is equal to U we transpose. Now uh, I'm going to present our first method, closed form diagonalization method. So as I said before, in order to find the nearest rotation matrix, we have to minimize this equation, which is equivalent to maximizing this equation. And this is uh, the optimal uh, solution uh, to the above equation using the uh, Lagrange multipliers. So if the determinant of R is not zero, then uh, R transpose R is symmetric and positive definite. So now the problem is reduced to finding the square root of the A. So according to the Cayley Hamilton theorem, which is state that the uh, square root of the uh, each uh, rear uh, square matrix um, should satisfy its characteristic polynomial. So we have this equation where the A3, A2, A1, A0 are defined as follows. Lambda i are the uh, are the roots of the characteristic polynomial of the A. So from the equation 3.1, we can find the uh, square root of the A, but we have four unknowns, uh, lambda i. So how to find this? Uh, we 
can find because the lambda i are the roots of the characteristic polynomial of the a. So we have this polynomial where the p, q, r is uh, are defined as follows. And this quartic polynomial can be solved using the simple variation of the Flores uh, method. So here is the explanation of the Flores method. First, we need to find the A and B. And after that, Y prime, D, E, and C. And finally, here uh, are the salts root of, the, of the, this polynomial in decreasing order. So now we have the uh, lambda i. So we can find the square root of the A. So, and then using this equation, we can find the nearest uh, for the rotation matrix. Now I'm going to explain, and sorry, here you can see the, we want to know the effect of the nose on the eigenvalue of the matrix A. So uh, we, we, we obtain the eigenvalue of a noiseless rotation matrix whose elements are then contaminated with the noise uh, distributed in terroir minus delta and the delta. And if this operation is repeated for each value of the delta 10 power to six times, and the average of the eigenvalues are obtained, then we have this plot. As you can see here for low level of the noise, lambda r are almost one. So for low level of the noise, A3 is equal to four, A2 is equal to six, a1 is equal to four and A0 is equal to one. Now the formula that we obtained for finding the nearest rotation matrix can be simplified to this formula. Well, this formula can be used for low level of the noise. So uh, now I'm going to uh, present another method using the double quad formula. So uh, while rotation in three dimension is defined by the axis of rotation and angle of rotation in four dimension is defined by two orthogonal plane and two angles. So it can be proved that every four, uh, four D rotation matrix can be decomposed into the right and left uh, isochronic uh, rotation matrix where L and R can be interpreted as a unit quaternion. So every four D rotation matrix can be represented by double quaternion L and R. And uh, let's assume these uh, two matrices. So the, uh, the above, uh, the equation 4.1 can be written as equation 4.4 because the problem now is to solve equation 4.1 to find the double quaternion normalizing and then returning back to the rotation matrix. So as I said before, in order to find the nearest rotation matrix, we have to minimize this equation, which is equivalent to maximize trace R transpose R. And this, the trace R transpose R can be uh, expressed by double quaternion. So maximizing this equation uh, can be decomposed into two independent uh, optimization problem, 4.8 and 4.9. And these two uh, equations are solved when uh, L and R are the dominant eigenvector of H, H transpose and H transpose H. So now uh, the problem is reduced to finding the, the, the largest roots of the characteristic polynomial of the H, H transpose and H transpose H. So, uh, uh, we can use the same, we can use the, the Flores method that I explained before. So after finding the largest uh, eigenvalue, uh, it can be uh, proved that the all columns of cofactor uh, matrix of cofactor of these two matrices are proportional to the L and R. So we can take uh, each of them but uh, from the numerical point of the view, it would be better to take the one with the largest smooth. So after defining the, the double quaternion, then we can uh, substitute in the equation 4.1 and find the nearest rotation matrix. However, since the L and R and minus L and minus R represent the same rotation, it may happen that uh, we get minus L, R, or L minus R because we computed uh, L and R separately without uh, considering their signs. So 
But to solve this problem, we just need to check the sign of the determinant of the R. If it's negative, then the minus R is the desired uh, solution. So to assess, uh, to see the accuracy of this method, well, we have implemented this method uh, and we apply this procedure. So we generated one mini random double quaternion, convert them to the 4D rotation matrix whose elements are then contaminated with the noise distributed in the minus delta and delta. Then we compute the nearest rotation matrix for this one minimum uh, noisy 4D rotation matrix using the, each of the above methods. And then we compute the maximum and the mean frequency known between the noisy rotation matrix and the obtained rotation matrix. Then we find the, uh, orthogon the maximum and mean orthogonality error uh, as the frequency norm of the RR transpose minus I. So if this procedure is repeated for, diff, for the values of the delta ranging from zero to 0 0.1, then we have two plots. The first plot, uh, the first plot show the maximum <coughs> Fermi's norm and the mean Fermi's norm uh, for different level of the noise. As you can see here, the curve of the diagonalization and the double quaternion uh, perform better than the uh, singular value decomposition in both cases. And here you can see the orthogonality error for this method for different level of the noise. So although for all application, the orthogonality error are negligible, but this is particularly true for the uh, diagonalization and the double quaternion method. So, and here you can see the average e execution time for this method. You will see that the, we have the uh, less computational cost. So the, the main contribution of uh, contribution of this uh, paper include we uh, propose two efficient and simple algorithms for solving the nearest rotation matrix because they are simple, they have the constant number of the op operations, so we can, so the contribution of each value to the solution can be studied, and they do not rely on, on, on an iterative algorithm, and they directly deliver the optimum solution, and performs better than singular variety composition. Yes, thank you so much. Uh,